Hello everyone, my name is Random1785, and in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to find fortresses and other things using the pie chart. So first, you want to uh, turn on the pie chart by holding Shift and pressing F3. This little thing pops up. Um, and next, you want to turn on chunk borders using F3 and G. Once you've done that, press on the number corresponding to tick, level, which is 1, and block entities, which is 6. And from here, you want to keep increasing your render distance until a mob spawner shows up. The mob spawner is blue, and you want to... Unfortunately, on 1.19, F3F was removed, so you have to manually increase your render distance every time. And you want to keep increasing this until something pops up. Um, and there you go. One popped up, 23 chunks away. So, if the mob spawner pops up on your mob chart, you can't get it out unless you re-log. Or you can't consistently get it out of your pie chart unless you just save and quit. So you're going to have to save and quit most likely. And here we go, we're back in. And as you can see, there's no... Never mind, it loaded in. Okay. So if it loads in, you want to go down one and you want to save and quit. So if you find... So at each time the moss owner is on your pie chart, you want to go down by one until you find that is no longer on your pie chart. So it's still on the pie chart, you go down by one, save and quit. Keep doing this until it no longer pops up. Okay, so we have finally have a render just on 16 and the pie, uh, and the spawner has gone red, or the spawner is no longer on our pie chart. Now I'm going to walk towards each uh, cardinal direction, south, west, north, and east. And we're going to cross a chunk border and see if the spawner pops up. And there it did. So this means that the thing will be in chunk 17, or X, this, this chunk number. And I'll link a video explaining this thing um, in the description. Uh, so now that I know that, so also this means that it's 17, and then since this is 0, it could be 17, negative 16, to 16. Oh, it works. So it could be in the chunk 17, and then it could be negative 16, the second number here could be negative 16, or positive 16. And we're going to go this way and see if we can find the fortress. Probably don't even need to cut the video here, because it's pretty fast. Um... So here I am, I'm almost at 17, and there we go, we found it. There it is. And as you can see, it is actually an 18, apparently. Alright, cool. So there we go, we have found the fortress with this method, as you can tell, and it is right here. Beautiful. You can actually find a lot more things using the pie chart. Um, here is a list of every single thing that can appear in the pie chart. Please check the description because this probably will change version to version. Um, because from 116.1 to 119, a bunch of things that are on the pie chart have disappeared. So please check the description to get the latest info on this. Um, the chest is probably the the thing that will show up the pie chart the most, and it basically it spawns in all these all these structures: dungeons, villages, strongholds, uh, rune portals. I think that is uh, jungle temples, desert temples. Igloos, shipwrecks, ocean ruins, mansions, outposts, buried treasures, literally everything. So if you see a, a chest, most of the time it's going to lead you to a dungeon. Um, but it can lead to you to any of these things. But I, I would say don't PIDAR with chests, because it's 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 just going to lead you to any of these. Most of the time it's going to be a dungeon, and it's going to be like, a, like why negative 50? And it's just, it's just really hard to find. So don't do that. In the nether... Uh, it can lead you to a fortress, a bastion, or a rune portal. Most of the time, it's going to lead you to a rune portal, so don't um, pie for that. Um, another way to pie for bastions, I mean, you can e-ray, but if the e-ray isn't working or something, you can try pie for piglin brutes. If you go to um, entities instead, you can find all the entities, and you can try to pie for piglin brutes, but they do move around, so sometimes it's kind of inaccurate. Um, in the end, however, chests are actually useful because they will point you to an end city, so that is something to keep in mind. Um, now for trap chests, these spawn rarely in woodland mansions, but if you always, but if you see a trap chest, um, which is at the very bottom, it's kind of covering my captions, there we go. If you see a trap chest, that means you have a woodland mansion nearby, so that's kind of cool. 
Uh, struggle boxes do show up, and they do not generate naturally, so these are going to lead you to player bases if you do PyDAR. Uh, on servers, PyDAR is very glitchy, and I, it probably won't work, so I don't even know what... I don't know, this probably isn't useful. And campfires and soul campfires are the exact same thing on the pie chart. So if I take the soul campfire and then I uh, refresh, uh, it, it has disappeared. Um, and if I place this down, you will see that it pops us as campfire. Um, instead of soul campfire. So both campfires will be the will show the exact same thing. Only the only the normal campfire generates and um, oh I forgot. Okay, they generate in Taiga villages. So if you see a campfire, you have a Taiga village nearby, and you can find a Taiga village with that. Beacons uh, do not generate naturally, of course, um, and they will probably lead to the player bases. Now, skull will lead you to end city ships. This is the only skull that will show up. So I have these player heads here, and I'm going to punch this. Uh, oh, sorry. And as you can see, if the skull is no longer my thing, I'm going to place down a player head. It's not going to appear. Oops, sorry. I'm going to place down a creeper head. It's not going to appear. Zombie head, not going to appear. If I get a skeleton skull or a wither skeleton skull, I believe none of these will make it appear. No, it won't. And if I place on the dragon head, it will show up. So, none. Of, so these will only lead you to entity ships. These don't generate naturally, anyways. But if you do find a skull, that means you have an entity ship, which is pretty cool. Um, ender chests are also they only generate in entities. So, along with side with chests, you can do ender chests. Um, ender chests will spawn less occasionally in entities. Um, entities have two. Uh, loot areas, or rather three. One is the tall tower that gives you two chests. One is an ender chest next to a regular chest, and the final one is the end ship. So ender chests are going to spawn less occasionally, and it's probably you probably just want to pyder for chests instead of ender chest. But if an ender chest does show up in the end, then that means you have an entity. But so will a chest, so it's kind of useless. But yeah, that's the only place ender chest will naturally spawn. And I guess you can find player, player bases with this, but I don't really know. Enchantment tables do not spawn naturally, but they do appear on the pie chart, and also end gateways. So if you're lost in the end, you can try pie darring for an end gateway, although most of the times they won't appear even on 32 render, so just be aware of that. Conduits also show up, and they're kind of useless. Uh, and bells uh, can help you find villages, and you can pie dar for villages using bells. And finally, spawners can lead you to... Oh, wait, why is there a village in the distance? Okay. <laughs> uh, spawners will lead you to dungeons, mineshaft, strongholds, or woodland mansions. Um, there, there is sometimes a, a spawner of woodland mansions, although most of the, it's extremely rare from what I saw on the wiki. And I, that's, I've never seen that before, so it's probably not going to happen. Most of the time, a spawner in the overworld is going to lead you to a dungeon, so just keep, keep that in mind. Um, and as we said with the chest before, it, it, it isn't really worth going to dungeons. Um, in the nether, this spawner will lead you to treasure bastions and fortresses, um, and that is basically well, how you find a fortress in the nether. Alright, cool. Now that that's out of the way, I'm going to go and explain what pie darting actually is. So, uh, let's see this red block, let's see each of these blocks represent chunks, and I'm standing on this red block right here. Um, so, if I increase my render distance to say 3, 4, 5, 6, and I see a spawner pop up, then, and then I decrease it to 5, and I no longer see the spawner pop up, which would be the green, the green is render distance 5, the blue is render distance 6, that means that the spawner is in one of these blue chunks around the edge of my render distance. Um, and let's just say that ren the spawner is in this chunk. So now I'm going to go to 5 render distance, and if I do this nice little function I made, oops, if I do this nice little function I made to visualize chunks, on five render distance, on five render distance, I will be loading all of these chunks, as you can tell. None of the blue chunks will be loaded. And on five render distance, distance, if I just delete the visualization plug, okay. If on five render distance I walk in each of the cardinal directions, if I walk north, um, I can run this command again, and as you can see, I will load. A line of chunks over here and if the spawner is in any of these chunks then it will pop up my pie chart and if the spawner is any of these chunks it will not pop up so using this you can kind of narrow down um, a few chunks that the spawner can be at now if the spawner was to be oh, okay also something really weird is that spawners actually 
don't pick block. So if, if you if you pick block on a spawner, it actually will not it will not show you it will not give you the spawner. But if the spawner is one of these four corners, um, then you will have to. It's extremely rare because as you can see, uh, it can be in any of the blue chunks, and if it's in the corner, it's extremely rare. But if it were to be in one of those chunks, you have to go north and east, and you have to go to this block here. And then, if I visualize the chunks I'm loading now, as you can see, it will load this chunk right here. But that's extremely rare, and you probably don't have to worry about that. Um, yeah, so that's how PyDraw works. I turn my distance down, and I run this way, and I load a string of chunks over here. So keep it, and yeah, that's basically it. Um, hopefully you enjoyed my PyDraw video. If you have any questions, if I explain this badly, please tell me in the comments down below. Uh, check, the script, check the description, because I have no clue if this will work on 1.20. Um, PyDAR has been broken like multiple times, from 117 to 119, they've been nerfing it. So I highly doubt that this will survive 1.20. But yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please, check the, please check the description for any um, updates on PyDAR, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. Thank you all so much for watching. As a bonus clip, I'm going to teach you how to raid end cities. Uh, so, uh, so anything that's three layers tall will have a chest and an ender chest inside it, except for the spawning one. The one at the very bottom will not have anything in it, um, and none of these will have anything. So there's only two things you have to look for. One is, well, I mean, three things. One is the ship. You, you, you probably know that. Um, if you see anything that has three of these things, like one at the bottom, two here, three here, then it's going to have a chest and an ender chest inside it. Um, if you see this, this really tall tower, um, it can be, it can be like short, it can be, I've, the shortest one I've seen is like three tall, I think, um, like from like the bottom to here, but if you see this tall tower, there's going to be two chests at the top, um, and there's also this thing at the top, if you're flying around with Nitro, you can just go down these stairs. Um, and this one, as you see, it's three, there's going to be a chest and inner chest inside it. Uh, that one's two, so it won't have anything inside it. And then this one's another three, so it's going to have a chest and inner chest inside it. So yeah, hope you uh, liked my end city looting tutorial.